Over decades, heart disease slowly stole Hamid Madavi's quality of life. When I get off my car till I get to my desk, how many times do I have to stop to catch my breath? In 2015, the day after his son's wedding, he was hospitalized, 12 pounds of fluid removed from his body. The next year, it happened again, and his doctor suggested he go to Tufts Medical Center to be evaluated for a heart transplant. Hit me between the eyes with a two by four, you know, like, transplant. It was something you had not considered. Not really. They tried IV medications and inserted a pump that would help his heart make it to transplant. And then in November 2016, the call came. And I asked her, what can you tell me about the heart? And she just said, absolutely nothing. Just like that. They don't know anything about the, where the donor came from, that he's on anything. Dr. David D'Onofrio is medical director of the Advanced Heart Failure Program at Tufts. He says privacy is of the utmost importance in the transplant process, but if a donor or recipient wants to make contact, there is a way. Through New England Donor Services, or NEDS, an organization that coordinates organ and tissue donation in the six New England states and Bermuda, and can help make that connection. Some families, you know, want closure and have given the gifts of life and don't want to communicate and know anything about recipients, but other families do and will get the letter and, and communicate. Hamid waited about a year and then sent a letter through NEDS to his donor's family. Within a week, we had a letter back. And at that point, as I said, I didn't know that she had been waiting for this letter. He liked to draw. And Charlene Slaver Roosevelt had been waiting for that letter. Hamid had received his heart from her son, Joey. Joey had what you would call an old soul right from the beginning, very mature, very wise. Joey was an artist, a musician, and Charlene says he loved to learn. This is Joey's belt from when he was young and he was in the Scouts. He was 24 walking home one October night in 2016 when he was hit by a car. Charlene didn't know he was an organ donor, but she hoped she would one day meet the recipients of her son's gifts of life. And when I received Tommy's letter and his wife's letter, it was just mind blowing. It was this peace. The pair continued to exchange letters and emails, now directly, without NEDS as the intermediary. And in July of 2018, they met for the first time. She said, is your heartbeat normal? I said, yeah, here. And I gave her my, my hand. I was not thinking about it. As soon as she felt my pulse, she just busted into tears. Mm -hmm. Charlene was able to listen to Joey's heart beating in Hamid's chest. I was able to you know, hear my son's heartbeat again. That first visit lasted hours and they kept in close touch, their friendship growing by the day. I think about what they go and do. You know, Hamid was going, told me he's going for a bike ride one day and I said, alone? <laughs> you don't have someone going? Dr. D'Onofrio says just 1% of Tufts recipients and donor families will ever meet face to face. And this relationship is rare. Now, I've been in the transplant business for 25 years, and I don't think I've seen such a, a tight bond and relationship with the donor family mm -hmm. and a recipient uh, that I do uh, here. That bond never so clear as the moment Hamid walked Charlene down the aisle at her wedding, pausing at an empty chair set aside in honor of Joey, taking the last few steps up to the altar and then holding on a powerful moment for everyone in that room. I could feel his heart beating through his suit. And that set me back a little bit. That became very real to actually feel that. But for that brief moment, it just felt like there was Joey. I always say, Charlene's counting on me to stay alive and be alive. Hamid and Charlene continue to stay in close touch, and they've made a promise to work together to increase awareness of organ donation through organizations like Heart Brothers Foundation, fundraising to fill the gaps for heart failure patients. Hamid also makes an effort to visit the same floor at Tufts where he once stayed. Hey! How's it going? Long time no see. Long time no see. How you been? Stopping in to chat with those now waiting for the same call that will save their lives. Very humble man. 
carrying a very humble heart. I believe the heart chooses the person. It's just where it was meant to be. And Charlene has communicated with some of the other recipients of Joey's organ donations. In fact, the uh, kidney and liver recipients were actually guests at her wedding. That is so nice. And Hamid and Charlene remain very close. They actually just spoke on the phone last week. He says that they lift each other up during the dark days of winter. As far as his health goes, he continues to do really well. Great. Coming up, for the future of heart transplants, look to the past.